The Bear, Season 1, Episode 7. This episode is called Review. And yeah, another episode I absolutely love. Spoilers for these first seven episodes. I realize I haven't been saying the following, I guess, might be good too. I am swearing profusely in these videos. You know, like they do in the show. It just, it would feel weird to me to not. So, you know, if that makes you not want to watch the video, I completely respect that. Support the strike. sag after really need the support. In the description box, there'll be some links to videos that help explain it really well. And, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything to add to what they say. So, let us dive right in. So, yeah, IMDb sums up the, the plot thing, synopsis. A bad day in the kitchen, tensions rise, which, again, I feel like that's every episode. Is that the thing? Are, are whoever writing these just writing something that goes for every episode as, like, a sort of meta-commentary thing? Anyway. But, yeah, this is the famous long-take episode, or for the cast and crew, probably infamous. So, yeah, before we get into that, the episode opens on a montage setting, like, the, the atmosphere, and Ibrahim is, you know, reading aloud from the review, he's really, you know, he thinks it's great that they're getting such positive, and Sydney really wants him to stop before he gets to the part that incriminates her. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we saw her give the risotto to a guest and say, you know, here you go, I'm Sydney, you know, this is free. That was a food critic. <laughs> Which, I mean, I kind of respect one that doesn't announce themselves, you know. That's a... Fuck. Yeah, so now people are going to show up, to, you know, expecting risotto. That's not great. And <laughs> Tina shows up. You know, she, she does apologize for being late, which I really appreciate. And apparently... It wasn't her fuck up. It was T. It, it was Louis, and you know it's that thing of you know she needs a positive adult influence on him. She needs to get him off the the path that, and yeah, you know she's thinking Carmi. Carmi recommends Sydney because of course he fucking does. So yeah, um, and. Richie shows up and, of course, you know, makes a big stink of the about the the review. And I really love when when Carmi is like, "Okay, so Tina, you do this. Sydney, you do that. Richie, go fuck yourself." <laughs> and he responds, "69, chef." <laughs> you know, the others are like, "Okay, 155, 24." And yeah, you know, Richie. Not one to mince words, go straight for Sydney and, you know, the, the conversation broaches class, money, the, the you know, risotto and what they, they serve, the, the customers. And I mean, as usual, she's being very reasonable. Like, she's, she's a mushroom cloud lane motherfucker, motherfucker. And you can't blame her because Richie, God, he's such a fuck up. Yeah, um, you know, she makes a really good point, you know, yeah, it's great that, you know, low-class people come in here, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but they split one sandwich and get a free cup of water, we're not making money off them. You know, we can't, like, we're struggling as a business, we, we're barely above water, and you want to, you know, celebrate the customers that pay nothing, basically. And, let's see, yeah, and, and, you know, we get the detail about, you know, apparently Sydney fucked up by leaving the machine, you know, letting people pre-order. So, within the next eight minutes, they have to prepare hundreds of dishes, Jesus fucking Christ. And, and Marcus is, is still obsessing over the fucking cake. He's not, it, it's not ready, even though they, they have to be ready. And Richie, 
Richie makes Sydney drop the cake. And then he refuses to apologize. He's like, you didn't say corner. You didn't say corner. And, you know, I really appreciate Tina. You know, she's like, Sydney has grown on her like a tumor. So Tina wants to try to support her. It's like, you know, th this isn't you. You know, I, I just want to see if I can help, you know. And and just, yeah, it's it's one of those things, like, sometimes you don't want someone to come up to you and say, can I help? Sometimes you just want to be left, left alone. Let's see. And, yeah, so, so Sydney and Richie argue again, and I, I quite, you know, I didn't love that earlier when she, like, she had a great line on him, and the camera was all on her, and we didn't see his reaction, but they really make up for it with here, where she's, like, saying, you want, you want to talk nasty, you want to talk ugly, which is also, like, dude, Richie, glass house, motherfucker, okay? And, and yeah, so Sydney is, you know, she says, you're a fucking loser. We all know it. I saw through it immediately, and that's what you can't handle. And deep down, you know you're a loser, and then the fucking silver bullet. Your daughter knows you're a loser. Oh, dude. Okay, I was on Sydney's side up until, the, you know, I was like, okay, Richie deserves this dress down. Don't bring anybody's daughter into it. Do not. That is that is not kosher, man. And the the <laughs> and Richie gets stabbed in the ass, <laughs> which is <laughs> goddamn. The show isn't always funny, but when it's funny, it's fucking hilarious. And you know, uh, Ibrahim, I need some help here. I got stabbed. Did you deserve it? Probably. And the, let's see, um, right, and, and as, you know, to, to distract him from the pain, you know, Richie asks uh, Ibrahim, explain again about the, you know, Somali politics, and suddenly he's like, dude, this is Black Hawk Down, this is Black Hawk Down, it's fucking Piven. And Marcus gets really frustrated, and we see him, like, throw down the, the, um, I forget what they're called, but, you know, the, the thing with all the, the dessert stuff, and he's starting to take off the, the, the chef's, the, uh, clothing thing. So he's probably also about to, to leave, and Sydney, you know, is, is quitting, right now. Holy shit, that's, yeah. This was a very intense episode. Really, really loved. Just, yeah, I I mean, I'm going to be watching the next episode, like, as soon as I stop recording this, which I'm really glad about, because I, although, I mean, did, they did all air on the same date, right? Holy shit, I, it, it, it would have been unbearable to wait an entire week to see the resolution to, to this. Just, yeah. Um, I suppose... Yeah, that's that's everything I just... Yeah. Um, right, I, uh, you know, I'm 100% with Sydney, with, you know, um, Richie. If you're not Italian, do not use the, the Italian, you know, slang as if you are Italian. And the, you know... And him saying, you want your people in here, which is just, oh my fucking I, I think a lot of the time, Richie just doesn't think about the shit that comes out of his mouth. I don't think he's thinking about how fucking offensive it is for a white guy who's pretending to be Italian to tell a black person, you know, your people, just, Jesus Christ. And, and the, you know, yeah, like, obviously she's not classist. That's, that's bullshit. It's just... She just wants to make sure that the place is going to make enough money that they can get, you know. And Richie knows. Richie knows that they're in a bad situation. So, just, yeah. Fuck me. Um, 
The one take thing could easily have been gimmicky. I think it was the right choice. Like I said, didn't love that they're, you know, during, I guess, the first conversation. Yeah, when they're talking class and shit. You know, the camera is on Sydney, not capturing Richie's reaction to, to like, she drops a bombshell, and it's, you know, it's such a great line, really well delivered. We don't get to see his reaction. That's one of the, you know, downsides to this kind of thing. But the shot where he's in the foreground in focus, she's in the background out of focus, and, and just, you know, really saying these things that are devastating for him to hear, that was perfect. That was, I, ah, uh, so glad that wasn't like a fucking two shot or some just no that was 100 percent perfect and and you know the the dp clearly understood her words are powerful enough we don't need to see her face really clearly we need to see his reaction you know and yeah it's it's very clear like this is the kind of thing like he usually runs away from people who are talking to him like that you know i 100 percent his wife has definitely she didn't go this far, but she's dressed him down more than once, and yeah, you know he's he's he does not know how to respond to that sort of thing. He's he's yeah, and and the you know he can't run away. You know they have to both work in the kitchen. Uh, you know so so that yeah, um, really love this episode. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's everything. Uh, holy shit, I'm really glad I'm watching this show. Yeah, uh, next episode.